We also can't forget Simpson's four children, who in a normal family would rightly expect to divvy up their parents' assets. So what will this final earthly accounting of O.J. Simpson look like? For that, I turn to one of the smartest legal minds on television today. It's News Nation's legal contributor, Jesse Weber. Hey, Jesse. So they they are the first, right? Like, why why is it that they're first in line before any other debtor, the the Goldmans and the Browns? Hey, Ashley. So yeah, they're called secured creditors, right? They have an interest in the assets, and as secured creditors, because they got a judgment. They're at the front of the line in the probate, probate process. So if you're talking about domestic bank accounts, if you're talking about personal property like those memorabilia, in theory, they would be the first to get it. The problem, of course, Ashley, is we don't know full accounting. So if he transferred assets to, let's say, an irrevocable trust, that now belongs to the beneficiary. Creditors can't go after that. You talked about offshore bank accounts. If he, But by the way, he would have had to report it under law about having those offshore bank accounts. It's not impossible for creditors to get that money, but my gosh, is it complicated and very costly to do that. So there are ways that they might be able to get money. There's a ways they might go to the top of the line, but we just right now don't know the full accounting of O.J. Simpson's estate. So let's talk about that $2 million home in Vegas. From my yeah. understanding, um, Vegas uh, is in Nevada. Nevada is another homestead state, just like Florida. Yeah. And, you know, that's why he wanted to set up there so that nobody could ever come after his homestead. Well, he's gone. Does homestead pass down to descendants, to children, or does homestead end with the homeowner? So you're right. There is a homestead exemption, right, that would normally creditors wouldn't be able to get it. And really the way you'd have to show that is that it is a residence currently for somebody in his family. So, for example, if it was a wife or his children, they would have to make a claim to it. And if really no one is living there and no one's using it, in theory, it could be sold off and uh, maybe go to uh, the judgment. But right now it would be up to the children, it seems, by all accounts, to try to make a claim to that house first. Okay, so then next, I watched him uh, in Airplane, and I know how the movies work. You usually get residuals for the actors that, you know, are in perpetuity. What about any earnings that his estate might continue to make after his death? Uh, how can the Goldmans yeah. get at that? So it's a tricky situation. I actually thought about the same thing with his NFL pension. And you talk about it, sometimes these pensions or these residuals will happen. Uh, they continue even after death. Some happen uh, or cease during death. There's a claim that I wonder uh, if his heirs or his children could make that this is now going to my benefit. I am the beneficiary of this. I, I shouldn't have a claim. No one should have a claim to what I'm receiving. I, I would think, though, that creditors, secured creditors, like the Goldmans and the Browns would be able to ultimately say, wait a minute, that was money that was owed to us. And I don't know if it's obviously that much money. Remember, they said this isn't about the money per se. This is about holding him accountable. And and in death, yeah. is it a way to hold him accountable some way? It's it's hard to say. It's more of a moral ethical question than it is really a financial question. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.